Hi, my name is Jaden Biotti, and I'm a senior at Concord High School. Um, I've been part of the theater program at Concord since my sophomore year, and I've had so many amazing experiences with the best people ever, so I'm really honored that I get to showcase this to you tonight. So I wrote and directed this show, it's called Almost 17, and essentially this side of the stage is telling the story of an art historian who's studying medieval art, and this side of the stage is telling the story of the woman who's featured in these paintings, and there may or may not be a past and present connection unfolding throughout the show. My main inspirations for this show were my passion for medieval art, my Scottish heritage, and my sister Breslin, who's a professional artist who's actually here tonight, so shout out to her. <laughs> there is a Gallic word used in my show, by the way. The word is slanja, and it essentially means to good health, which culturally means cheers. So if you hear that, that's what that means. Um, I would first like to thank my cast. They've been so amazing throughout this entire process, and I can't wait for you to see all their hard work pay off tonight. I apologize to them for making them all, or most of them, learn a Scottish accent, but I appreciate their dedication to my vision. I would of course like to thank our department director, Clint Close, our set designer, John Haytab, and all of our lighting, sound, and backstage crew, because without them, none of this would be possible. So without further ado, please enjoy my original show, Almost 17. Let us awaken! Today's the day you are to become Queen of Scotland! Why must I become Queen now? Can't I at least have a, a fortnight to mourn? I know how you feel, and I'm terribly sorry about your father. But he has raised you for this exact moment. You are to become Queen of Scotland. Now, come along. We must get you dressed. Hello, you must be Isabella. Please, sit down. Hello, yes, it is me. It's so great to meet you. You as well. My name is Georgina Thompson. I understand you were interviewing for the recently opened position as an art historian. And you were 25 years old, yes? Yes, that is correct, ma'am. Here's my resume. Impressive resume, Miss Robinson. Now tell me a bit about your passion for studying historical art. Well, it's simply something that's always interested me. I've always been passionate about it. I see. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you were hired. In fact, you are exactly the person we have been searching for. You are so well researched in medieval art, and we have a special project we would like to start working on. Here, come this way and I will show you. Oh, thank you so much, ma'am. I will not let you down. I can promise you that. We are gathered here today for the coordination of the daughter of Rupert VI, Elizabeth Robertson IV. A woman in power over Scotland. It's blasphemy! You are damn right. She will curse this great country and shame her father's name. Mark my words. What did you say? Oh, uh, nothing, your highness. Do not try to fool me. I heard perfectly clear what you spoke. Both of you out of my court this instant. Guards, take them away. Please, your majesty. We did not speak of anything of offense. Out of my court, now! Proceed. Of course, your majesty. Please repeat after me, one line at a time. I, Elizabeth Robertson IV, daughter of Rupert Robertson VI. I, Elizabeth Robertson IV, daughter of Rupert Robertson VI. Vow on the word of God to serve Scotland with unwavering loyalty. Vow on the word of God to serve Scotland with unwavering loyalty. And if I shall betray my country, I shall be killed in the name of God, my country, and beloved father, King Rupert the Sixth. And if I shall betray my country, I shall be killed in the name of God, my country, and beloved father, King Rupert the Sixth. Slanja! Slanja! So, please, tell me about this project, Miss Thompson. Of course, and please, call me Georgina. The project you are going to be working on is a series of paintings, mostly ranging from painted in 1506 to 1516. They are all of Queen Elizabeth IV of Scotland, also known as the Disappearing Queen of Oma 17. Surprised? Well, 
Yes, I just don't understand because- Because these paintings are said to be hidden? Well, it turns out we were able to find where they were hidden. There's no way they found them. What was that? Oh, nothing, I, I, I didn't say anything. All right, then I suggest you meet the team and they will tell you more about the history of this woman and the purpose of the project. Although I'm sure you know much of it already. Excuse me, your majesty. You're excused for interrupting me. Malcolm Ross, is it? I'm honored and impressed that you know my name, your majesty. How could I not? All I hear in court these days is about this brilliant courtier painter. Well, as I state, I'm honored. So, why did you come to bother me so? I was wondering if I could have a word with you, miss. I suppose. Walk with me. So, what is it you need from me, sir? Well, you're a beautiful woman, and very smart as well. You're a very good queen, despite what some might say about a woman in power. Are you suggesting that people in my court are not fond of me? N no, I, I just meant... Uh, I'm not offended. After all, how could anyone forget what happened at my coronation? I see. So what do you say about dinner on my estate tomorrow night? I shall my servants prepare the best meal. Are you trying to form a courtship with me? Why? Do you want me to? I suppose tomorrow will suffice. Oh, will your mother and father be there? I would love to see them. They're among my most loyal courtiers. I suppose I can arrange that. It's settled then. I shall be there. Splendid. Good day to you, Your Royal Highness. You as well, Sir Malcolm Ross. Oh, sir. Yes? Tomorrow, you must show me some of your paintings, if you will. I shall. Perfect. <laughs> ah, here they are, Miss Robinson. Please meet your team. All men? Yes, well, it's very hard to find women in this profession. I'm lucky to be here myself, but we are very lucky to have a woman leading this project here at NYU. Yourself, of course, especially because the queen was known to be a very powerful leader. In fact, you kind of look a bit like her. In fact, the resemblance is strong. You don't say. Who are you talking to? Oh, no one, ma'am. And you can all call me Bella. Great. Well, I must be getting back to work. The team will brush you up on your knowledge of the history of this queen. Sounds good. So, who can brush me up on a bit of this history? Uh, I will. So pleased to meet you. My name's James Clark. However, I would rather tell you about the history of these paintings while showing them to you. I find it brings the story together so much more. Very well. You may go on break. Mr. Clark, let's look at some of these paintings. Yeah, let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, we are gathered here today for the matrimonial tie between Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth Cameron IV and Duke Malcolm Alexander Ross of Her Majesty's Royal Court. Malcolm Ross, repeat after me. I, Duke Malcolm Ross, hereby swear to uphold my duties as a husband. I, Duke Malcolm Ross, hereby swear to uphold my duties as a husband. And swear to protect the Queen in sickness and in health. And swear to protect the Queen in sickness and in health. I hereby swear to serve Scotland as its king and will be loyal to my beloved country above all else. I hereby swear to serve Scotland as its king and be loyal to my beloved country above all else. Thank you, Your Majesty. Now will Her Majesty please repeat after me. I, Queen Elizabeth IV of Scotland, daughter of King Rupert VI and Queen Mary II, hereby swear to uphold my duties as a wife. I, Queen Elizabeth IV of Scotland, daughter of King Rupert VI and Queen Mary II, hereby swear to uphold my duties as a wife. And swear to be loyal to my king in sickness and in health. And swear to be loyal to my king in sickness and in health. I hereby swear to continue to serve Scotland as its queen above all else. I hereby swear to continue to serve Scotland as its queen above all else. Thank you, Your Majesty. Congratulations, may I present this to the court, your king and queen. Slonja! Slonja! So, essentially the purpose of this project is to study the artistry of Malcolm Ross, the painter. More commonly known as King Malcolm Ross II of Scotland, who was husband to the disappearing queen of almost 17. And she got that name because, well, she became queen when she was almost 17. <laughs> who is Queen Elizabeth IV, of course. Let me give you a little backstory. The king and queen got married when they were 18. 
Before Malcolm was king, he was a duke and a beloved painter to the royal courts. He did many paintings and had a study in his father's grand house. Him and the queen were said to be absolutely in love with each other. Every painting ever painted of her from the time they got married, per her request, was done by him. They were a very happy couple, however, their marriage didn't last a lifetime. Eight years after they got married, during which they had two children, the queen tragically died. She was believed to be captured and killed, but her body was never recovered. The lone king was absolutely devastated. He continued to paint her, and only her, a year or two after her death, and when he couldn't bear it anymore, he hid all of the paintings he ever did of her. He died in 1546, and he never told anyone where those paintings were. No one has been able to find the place until now, and <laughs> boy, were we lucky to find them. Now, it's time to study them. So, shall we bring in the team and start studying this first painting, this lovely portrait? Yes, we should. Well, are, are you okay? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Let's bring in the team. My dear, what is this? It's a new painting room, of course. Isn't it marvelous? This is magnificent. Getting to paint in the castle whenever I mean to. There's a cherry on top of a perfect wife. Oh, you were so charming. Well, I want your first painting to be of me. Here, the easel's already set up. Gladly. Here, sit in that stool and I shall begin. Wow, the king's portraits of the queen are absolutely stunning. You could just the king's love for her and the way that he paints her. Yes, they really are beautiful. It seems that Ross used sponges as one of the main techniques in his paintings. Sponges, you say? What makes you say that? Well, many of the brush strokes do not seem to be brush strokes at all. If you look at the x-rays, they appear to be sponge painted. That's what gave his paintings their unique depth and texture. <laughs> wow, you're right. <laughs> That's brilliant. Good eye. Thank you, Mr. Clark. If I'm going to call you Bella, you should call me James. Sounds good. James. So, Bella, how'd you get into art history? Well, I've always had a strong passion for history. It's just something I've always loved. I think that it's important to study the past because it lets us learn and grow and I've always loved researching this time period specifically. I just think there's so many things that people in this time, or our time, I should say, don't understand or don't care about because it was so long ago. As for the art portion, artwork, especially oil paintings, is just something I've always loved. There's so much passion and emotion and love can be conveyed through it. And, uh, my husband used to paint. Husband? Oh, late husband. He passed away a while ago. Oh, I'm... I'm sorry. Thanks. I'm... I'm okay now. I can see why some of our colleagues think you two have a strong resemblance. Elizabeth is a beautiful woman. Er, was. I guess. <laughs> you know, James, you remind me of someone. And it's weird to me because I've never met anyone like him until now. He was always to me completely one of a kind you are, Malcolm. I've never met anyone quite like you, you know. And your talent, this painting, is absolutely magnificent. Why did you start painting anyway? When I was a boy, my uncle was always painting. He was also known as a rare dew courtier painter. When I was growing up, I would always ask to watch him paint, and when I got old enough, I asked him to teach me. And so I became my art tutor. I would spend nearly every day, hours, at his estate in his grand studio, painting and learning from him. I was terribly sad when he passed, but after that, I promised to carry on his legacy in the court. I'm so sorry. That must have been terrible. It was, but the comfort of knowing I'm carrying on his memory is fulfilling. I'm sure. You had mentioned earlier when we had spoke for the first time about what happened at your coronation and you had a sullen tone. 
In all honesty, your ambition to be the best queen drew me to you. Well, if I'm telling the truth, I had never really imagined myself as queen. I thought that somehow it would pass over me and I wouldn't have to step into this role. I was occupied and perfectly happy living my innocent life, free of responsibility and relying on my mother and father to carry me through any duties I had. Of course, at the time, I was much less mature. And it wasn't until those filthy court members made those remarks at my coronation that I had a rush of motivation to be the best leader this country has ever seen. And, well, my other wish, it was to find true love, a love that could accompany me through my entire life. And I have found that, and I'm complete for the rest of my life. As if I, my love, you're truly the best leader this country has ever seen, I'm sure, but... Malcolm, can I ask you something? Of course, what's on your mind? Why do you use those sponges to paint? I've never seen any painter do that. I found that if you use sea sponges, it adds a beautiful emotional texture to the paint. Here, I just added the finishing touches. My goodness, it's beautiful. Thank you. It's all thanks to my uncle's teaching, truly. Did he teach you the sponges too? <laughs> that was on my own. Brilliant. Hey. How's everything going? Great. I'm studying a later portrait of the king and queen and their children. Sounds exciting. Anyway, random question. You haven't been touching any of the paintings, have you? What? No, of course not. Don't no, be ridiculous, no, I'm, James. I'm not trying to offend you. It's just that I was studying some of the paintings to see if there are any fingerprints, that, see if there are any techniques the king used involving his hands, and I... I found yours on some of them. That's absurd. Even if they were mine, which they aren't, how could you possibly know they are mine? Well, none of the fingerprints I found matched the king's, so I ran it through our system. What's here? Exact match to yours. Now, I highly doubt that one of our most qualified and experienced art historians that we've ever had is going around touching extremely fragile and historical artwork. So, if you have a reasonable explanation for this, that would be great. Those fingerprints are not the king's. They are the queen's. <laughs> That's ridiculous. First of all, you don't know that, and clearly they're yours! Look! Could you just listen for a minute? This might be shocking. Yeah, sure, whatever. The queen didn't die when she disappeared. She wasn't taken away or killed. She faked her own death. She realized soon after becoming queen that she was somehow staying the same. Her face and nature unchanging. The court simply described her as having unwavering beauty, but she knew it wouldn't last. So, as hard as it was for her to leave her husband and children and beloved country, she faked her own death and disappeared. Yeah, interesting story. But how can any of this be proven? And also, how are you the only one that knows this? Because I am Queen Elizabeth IV of Scotland. What? What, what are you talking about? This is ridiculous. I don't believe you, Bella. You have to! And you can't tell anyone. You're the only one who knows. Prove it. Well, first, our alike looks. Second, Others have dated these very fingerprints, and they date back to when these paintings were painted. So how could I, by chance, have identical fingerprints to a queen who lived this long ago? I... I don't understand how this is possible, but... I don't either. I've just come to accept it. So, you're saying you're essentially almost 17 forever? Technically? Yes, but I suppose not in my mind. I hope that someday I can 
live and die just like everyone else. And so she did. Well, I did, I suppose. What Isabel didn't realize is that this phenomenon of her life would be broken when she told another living soul, something she had not ever done before. Seven years after she told James, they got married, and Isabel lived a fulfilled life for the first time in hundreds of years. She no longer had to run away or hide from every life she had ever experienced. And importantly, she found love again, a love that filled the hole having to leave Malcolm left in her heart. And so I got my wish to live and die just like everyone else. And I'm no longer simply almost 17. <laughs>